everybody and welcome to Cope with Hope. Today I'm going to be interviewing my very dear friend Navroz Sirwa who I've known since we were three years old, a senior counsel whose advice I really value in every way. Uh, it's always well thought of, sometimes very stern, but always with great love and deep thought and he's always been like that. You know, in school he'd take on teachers, he'd always have a different point of view, a wonderful point of view which as I've grown older, I've appreciated more and more. We're in touch almost every day and he's such an important part of my life and my heart and I'm thrilled that he's agreed to do this. Thank you, Navro, so much for being on my show. <laughs> Thank you, Nandik, for having me on your show. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be complete without you. So, Navroz, I'd like to ask you, what is it that you've been doing these past 66 days? Will you let us know? what you've been doing? Well, I've been under lockdown for more than 66 days. I closed my chamber on the 16th of March, yes. uh, realizing what was going to happen in this city. Uh, I did go to court on the 17th, but since 18th, actually, I've been at home. And I think I would divide this period into two. In the first half, I did no court work or legal work at all. I just switched off. Uh, not that much work came my way. I read a lot of books. I heard a lot of music. I exercised a lot, which went twice a day. I kept in touch with friends and my juniors and the other members of the legal profession because I thought the one-to-one -one contact was more important than messaging and whatsapps etc yes. uh, and i did a bit of housework as well that's lovely what is this housework that you did <laughs> so the housework i did was i uh, i adore carpets i uh, i grew up with carpets and since we are a little short of domestic work help uh, i took over cleaning of the carpets and I also took over, which is a weekly thing, not every day, uh, what we call top cleaning. So the fans, the lights, uh, the picture frames, the objet d'art on the various cupboards and bookcases, uh, my two chiming clocks, etc. And though I didn't learn cooking, unlike many of my uh, friends and colleagues, uh, I, I helped out a bit more than I normally in the kitchen and cleaning up after I'd finished or making my own breakfast, including coffee. And in the second half, I carried on with housework. I carried on with my exercise and my phoning of friends. But my reading and hearing music uh, declined sharply badly because I got into some professional work. I did a couple of legal webinars. Um, and yeah, so that's how I would divide the two phases of my lockdown. Clean carpets, make your own coffee, and do the top work. Excellent. Well done, <laughs> Rose. Mona <laughs> must be very happy with that. <laughs> I love it. So, Navroz, tell me, for you personally, what does hope mean? What does the word hope mean for you? Well, I think hope connotes to me uh, a sense or degree of, of optimism, uh, of brightness uh, for oneself, uh, for one's society, for, for the world as a whole. Uh, and I'm pretty hopeful uh, that going forward, uh, we, if we manage things well and manage things properly, uh, we may very well come out with a better world uh, than we were in uh, pre-COVID uh, and to that limited extent and only to that limited extent, uh, maybe something has actually come out of uh, the coronavirus. Yeah. So that's, that's my, my vision of hope. That's lovely. And Navru, tell me what you think of what's happening in the world today. Um, vis-a-vis -vis our fellow brethren, our friends, respect, kindness, generosity uh, as, a, as individuals, as a country, as a society. 
and your opinion of what's happening in the world, you know, the migrant workers, what's happening in the US, what you think can be a solution that we can do as individuals. What is your take on this? Uh, well, if you look at the world today, it looks pretty bleak. Uh, economically, politically, in many countries, including in democracies. Uh, but I still think there are things we can take away from this. Uh, I think we are going to value things uh, which some we valued, but at the same time took for granted yes. earlier, yes. like meeting friends, uh, going to parties, yes. socializing. After the whole, the key phrase has been social distancing yes. uh, in the recent past. Uh, and so I think the next time we meet up with people, the next time. We are, we are in the presence of other people, even strangers maybe. Yeah. We will learn to say that a little more. Yeah. I think on the environment front, uh, if, if, if countries and people and societies do things sensibly, then the new normal, uh, whether it's the way we live our lives, whether it's the way we are going to work, uh, we could end up with uh, some solution to this terrible uh, climate change problem. Yes. Uh, we've all appreciated, you read about it, you see pictures, you have articles uh, about uh, how fish have come back into waters, which for years there were no fish, how uh, animals have taken over small towns. Yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, of the blue skies of birds, even in Bombay, people have noticed the birds and the chirping of birds and valued and appreciated the lack of noise, smoke, traffic, pollution. Yeah. And I think going forward, maybe if we can build on this, uh, there just could be, at least in certain respects, uh, a brighter world ahead. When the lockdown finally ends and us, we all start emerging into society. Yes, yes. And what do you think about this situation about the migrant laborers? And what would you think the best solution would be? It's a very, very serious problem. Yes. Uh, I don't think there's any bright spot in it, except possibly the way civil society rose to the occasion, NGOs uh, collected money, rallied around massively. Uh, and the press, NGOs, activists, lawyers, retired judges, yeah. ultimately were able to import to pass some proactive orders. Yeah. Uh, I think slowly, over a period of time, many of them will come back yeah. to the cities. But I think uh, their absence has shown their value to people, to cities. Yeah. And hopefully there will be better arrangements and a slightly better life for them uh, with dignity uh, and even economically when they become that. But I do believe that many, having realized what has happened and what is what is the situation in cities in a, when you get trapped like this? They yeah. very well just prefer to remain with their families in the village. Because they don't know what situation think, they're going to come back to. I think many will come back. Okay. Uh, I think economic necessity will force them even if they don't want to. Yeah. But I think there will be quite a few who will uh, say that the cost-benefit ratio isn't worth it. Yeah. And at least we can live with a certain degree of dignity uh, in village. And we are living with family, people we've known, etc. That, that's how I think it will pan out. But I think it's speculative. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. For sure. Thank you so much, Navroz. Any any other last words of wisdom or anything that you'd like to tell our audience? Well, uh, wisdom. Uh, I think there's one other area which at least for some of us, uh, the lockdown has has opened up, uh, which is uh, 
to to look inside yourself yeah uh, to, to to value a certain silence a certain solitude uh one is more relaxed one is less tense and we are seeing the benefits of it for example i see it in my yoga when i was a teacher earlier never did plan i have anything and i was delighted yeah. but um now we are doing yoga on zoom four yeah. times a week i do it four times a week and last 15 to 20 minutes is devoted to breathing cooling down relaxing not doing energetic asanas and i really have valued and appreciated it and i am certainly a karma human being yes. if not a i am a great so that's my right. <laughs> great believer in the breath in fact i do a lot of breath meditations on instagram and on facebook because i think really? yes i think it's the most wonderful gift you can give yourself i'm so happy to hear this now bro thank you <laughs> so is my wife <laughs> <laughs> because she is a great believer in self well. yeah so anyway Yeah. Uh, thank you so much Navroz that was such a lovely lovely chat i had with you and thank you for all your lovely insights and for giving me your time thank you and thank you You're for welcome. all that we share thank you <laughs> thank you bye, bye.